In the previous video, we solved a vector addition problem using a graphical method in which we actually drew the vectors on graph paper and measured the result. In this video, we're going to solve the exact same problem, except we're going to use trigonometric calculations. However, before we do that, there's a new principle I need to introduce to you, okay? So this is our problem from last time. I'm going to set this aside for the moment so I can introduce you to a new principle that we can use for our vector analysis. Okay. Let's suppose we have three vectors where two of those vectors are being added together to make the third one. Okay, so I'm going to make some axes here. And I'm going to draw three vectors onto here. Call this vector for you. Call this one here. W and this vector I put in here, I'm going to call vector V. Okay, my first question for you here, which of these two vectors are being added together to make the third one? Okay, so maybe pause the video for just a moment here, see if you can figure it out, which of these vectors are being added together to make the third one? Now, remember, when you want to figure out which vectors are being added together to make the third one, you look for the tip-to-tail connection. The tip-to-tail connection is here. The tip of U touches the tail of V. So we can see that it is vector U and vector V being added together to make vector W. V equals vector W. Okay, so here is our new principle for doing uh, calculations with vectors. It turns out that if you have two vectors, which sum together to make the third vector, then we have exactly the same relation between the components of the vectors. So in this case, what that would mean is that the x component of u plus the x component of v equals the x component of w. Similarly, the y component of vector u plus the y component of vector v equals the y component of vector w. Okay, so now we're going to use this idea to revisit the exact same problem we looked at in the previous video. Okay, here's our problem from the previous video. We have an airplane that flies 200 miles in the direction 65 degrees north of east. That's our first displacement. We call that vector A. The airplane then flies 300 miles in the direction 15 degrees south of west. That's our second displacement. And then we add those two displacements together to get a third displacement, which we are calling vector C. Now, in the previous video, we solve this problem by actually drawing the addition out carefully on graph paper and then measuring the length and direction of vector C. In this video, we're going to take a different approach. What we're going to do instead is we're going to use trig calculations to calculate the X and Y components of A. Let me kind of sketch out what we're going to do. So we're going to use trig calculations to get the x and y components of vector A. We're going to use trig calculations to get the x and y components of vector B. And then once we have used trig calculations to get all of those components, we're going to say that the x component of C is the x component of A plus the x component of B. And the y component of C equals the y component of A plus the y component of B. So once we have then constructed the x and y components of C, we can use those to find the magnitude and direction of vector C. And hopefully we come up with something which is pretty close to what we got 
in the previous video using the graphical method. Okay, so let's get started with this. Okay, so we're going to start. We're going to start by finding the x and y components of vector a. And in order to do that, I'm just going to make a picture of vector a all by itself on its own coordinate axes. Magnitude 200 miles. Makes a 65 degree angle with a plus X direction. We would like to find the X and Y components of vector A. Okay, so remember how we construct the components. You go to the tip of the vector and then drop perpendiculars onto the two axes. So this would be my X component here. This would be my Y component here. Okay. Now, in some of the previous videos, I showed you how you could find components of vectors by drawing a graphical triangle here and then copying the graphical triangle off to the side and then analyzing the graphical triangle. So here we're gonna do something that kind of cuts to the chase a little bit more. What we're gonna say is that each of the vector components is represented, and let me put this off to the side. So for each component, I'm going to express the component as a plus or a minus. We have to figure out which one. Then times the magnitude of the vector, uh, sine or a cosine. Okay, so for every component we work out, we're just, just going to write down a plus or a minus, then the magnitude of the vector, and then either a sine or cosine. Let's get started here. So the x component of vector A. Is that plus or minus? Well, it projects onto the plus x direction. So I'm going to put a plus sign here. Then I'm going to put the magnitude of the vector, which is 200 miles. Now, oh, next, I put either a sine or cosine. Now I'm using the 65 degree angle. And you can see that a sub x is adjacent to the 65 degree angle. So what goes here is cosine of 65 degrees. Okay, so take 200 miles cosine, take 200 miles times cosine 65, put that in your calculator, and you will get 84.5 miles. Okay, similarly, a sub y, okay, that falls onto the plus y direction. You then put the magnitude of the vector, 200 miles. For a sub y, do I use sine or cosine? Well, a sub y over here, that's the same as the segment over here, right? Same. So a sub y is actually opposite the 65 degree angle. So I'm going to sine 65. Put that in my calculator and I get 181.3 miles. All right, so that is vector a. Now, similar to vector A, I'm going to take the components of vector B by making a fresh set of Cartesian axes here. Okay. And 
when I take the components of a vector, I always take that vector and I place the vector so that the tail of the vector is at the origin. So vector B is gonna go in here. Fifteen degrees in there. Okay, now let's drop perpendiculars in order to form the components. Be the y component of B. This would be the x component of B. Okay. Now at this point, I would encourage you to pause the video and see if you can work out the X and Y components of vector B on your own using the principles that I described earlier when I was taking the components of vector A. Okay, so hopefully you've tried this on your own, but here goes, BX equals, all right, plus or minus. Well, it falls onto the minus X axis. I'm gonna put a minus. Okay, the magnitude, I forgot to copy it from over here, 300 miles. A sine or cosine, well, that X component of B is adjacent to the 15 degree angle. So I'm gonna put cosine 15, stick that in your calculator and get minus 289.8 miles. Similar B sub Y, it projects onto the minus Y axis. So I put a minus sign. And I put the magnitude 300 miles. That B sub Y, that's the same as the segment over here, right? Opposite the 15 degree angle. Put that in your calculator, minus 77.6 miles. Okay, as advertised, we're gonna put this together like so to get the components of vector C. So C sub X equals A sub X plus B sub X. Add those together here and here, and you get minus 205.3 miles. C sub Y equals A sub Y plus B sub Y equals 103.7 miles together. All right, so now let's sketch vector C on its own coordinate axes. X and Y. I'm going to draw this in a way that is about faithful to how long those components actually are. Say that minus 205.3 miles is about there. And we'll say that 103.7 miles is about there. Okay, so vector C would be in here somewhere. And we can check with our earlier figure to see that that's about what we expected. So oh, it kind of matches. It kind of matches. And here I can even compare this vector C with the result of the graph from the previous video. And you can see it kind of looks right here. All right, anyways. Uh, what we want to do now is find the magnitude and direction of this vector C. 
So we're going to want to find that angle that's in there. And we're also going to want to find the magnitude. <clears throat> okay, so to find the magnitude of the vector, we can always find the magnitude of a vector using the Pythagorean theorem, which is to say that the magnitude of the vector is the x component squared plus the y component squared, square root the whole thing. Okay, so here I guess I'll show the substitution. Cx, that's minus 205.3 miles, and then squared plus Cy, 103.7 miles squared, square root. And upon substitution, I get 230 miles. I'm curious how close that came out to the graphical solution. So it looks like the graphical solution was right on the money, okay? And just for the record, I did not rig the graphical solution to come out uh, to have this answer. I just kind of went through it just as I was showing you in the other video. But if you do it carefully, it comes out pretty close. Okay, now we want to find this angle. Now to get this angle here, because I don't want to worry about that minus sign too much, I'm going to go to the little trick of just putting a geometric triangle in there. Here I'm drawing the geometric triangle in red, then copy that geometric triangle off to the side and do my analysis on the geometric triangle. Okay, so if I copy that geometric triangle off to the side, theta in here, then the length of this side on the geometric triangle would be 205.3 miles. The length of this side on the geometric triangle would be 7 miles. So if I want that theta there, I would say tangent. Remember, tangent theta divided by 205.3 miles, mile cancels, and we get theta is equal to the first seven over 205.3. And put that in your calculator, it comes out to be 6.8 degrees. And comparing that to the graphical solution from before, again, you can see this is pretty close as well. Okay. Again, a product of just doing careful, careful work on the graph. Okay, so to finally put everything together, Let's go back to that original problem. Where was that? Original problem asks what are the magnitude and direction of the net displacement? Okay, so looking at the figure, that net displacement was represented by vector C. And you can see, first of all, vector C, that net displacement has a magnitude of 230 miles. And the direction is okay, this is 26 degrees here, but how can we connect that to the compass directions? Well, to get to 26.8 degrees, I would start out facing west and turn 26.8 degrees to the north. So we would say that this direction is 26.8 degrees north of west. Okay, so to put the uh, answer in a single sentence, we can say that the net displacement in is 230 miles in a direction twenty six point eight degrees north of west. 